The QCM50 color sensor from Banner Engineering helps solve challenging color applications, including color sortation and quality control monitoring. The sensor offers two different operation modes, including color mode, where a specific color is taught and a tolerance for variation of that color can be adjusted to ensure consistent product coloring, and best fit mode, where the sensor is taught various colors and will always provide an output based on the color that most closely represents the taught conditions. To teach the sensor, we will first unlock the LCD screen by pressing the lock unlock key for three seconds. We will first teach the sensor in best fit mode. Best fit mode is ideal for applications where all the colors we expect are known and is great for applications involving sorting of products based on color. With the LCD unlocked, we can press the menu button and select sensor mode. The sensor will give us an informational box stating that all of our outputs will turn off. Press OK on this screen. Use the down arrow and select best fit and press OK. Pressing the back button now returns our sensor to run mode and we are ready to teach the sensor. I will be teaching three colors of targets as well as a background with no target present in best fit mode. With the first target in front of the sensor, I press and hold the teach button for three seconds. Successful teaching of this target is indicated by both the green and orange LEDs flashing. To teach the second target, I press the right button which moves the teach function to the second output. The output that is being taught will have a square box around it on the LCD screen. Now with this target under the sensor, I press and hold the teach for three seconds, again looking for confirmation flashes from the sensor's LEDs. I repeat this step for target three, and finally I use output four to teach the background because in best fit mode the sensor will always provide an output based on what color is closest to the taught conditions. With these four taught conditions, we can see the LCD providing indication of what output is active when I move the target in front of the sensor. Output four is active when the target is removed, and outputs one, two, and three are active when the target is in front of the sensor. The QCM50 also provides a large depth of field, which will allow the target to move closer and further away from the sensor without affecting the output condition. To set up the sensor for color mode, I will first reset the sensor to factory defaults within the LCD menu. Changing the color mode will also clear any taught color conditions. When using color mode, the sensor is taught a specific known good condition and a tolerance for variation can be adjusted from that specific color, allowing applications involving quality control based on color to take place. In the diagram, think of the tolerance as the size of the circle around the taught color condition. Once again, we will select sensor mode in the LCD menu and select color mode for our application. Now, to teach the sensor, select the teach QC menu and select the output you would like to teach. I will select color as my teaching method, where a single color is presented to the sensor and a tolerance is adjusted from that point. If we choose color scan, we can take into account variations in color that might be present if the sensor is looking at a target with expected variations such as textiles. I will be using a color reference card for demonstrating this sensor mode, and we will teach the middle red target by pressing the teach button. The sensor then allows for adjustment of tolerance, and I will keep mine as the default tolerance level, so I will press set and then finish. After backing out to the run mode, we can now see that output one turns on when the original target is presented to the sensor, but will turn off when the sensor sees a target with more or less red. This is a great way to improve quality control by ensuring that only colors that are within our expected tolerance are accepted. For more information, visit BannerEngineering.com.